This is a movie about the journey of the odd pair of friends, Sebastian the elephant and Micho the cat as they set sail on an incredible giant pair to rescue their town's beloved mayor. As the movie begins, we see a happy little town called Sunnytown where everyone lives happily and the sun shines brightly. The heart and soul of the town, Mr. Mayor goes by the name JB. He is seen being harried at his office by the vice mayor, twig about his plans for the construction of the new town hall. Luckily, Sebastian shows up and the mayor heads out with him, leaving an angry twig behind. Sebastian and the mayor reach Sebastian's residence which is just by the cliff overlooking the sea. The house once belonged to his great-grandfather, a great sailor of his times. Sebastian shares his house with his best friend Micho, and together with the mayor, they begin to paint the house to give it a fresh look. After they get the job done, they enjoy a dice game on the deck with the dusky sun behind. Suddenly the mayor remembers his meeting with Twig and he leaves Sebastian and Micho with a promise to return soon. As it turns out, this becomes the last time they see their beloved mayor JB as he is never heard from again. It is like he has vanished mysteriously. The entire town searches far and wide for the mayor, but to no avail. Eventually, Vice Mayor Twig steps up as the interim mayor and calls off the search for JB. The first thing Twig sanctions is the construction of his much-coveted town hall, the one JB warned would block out the sun. But Twig does not care for the people like JB did, and Sunnytown is converted into a glum shadowed town, as the giant town hall blocks all the sunlight. One day, Micho is trying his luck at fishing and he accidentally catches a bottle with a rolled parchment inside. The two friends are thrilled when they realize it is from Mayor JB, who is alive but stranded on a mysterious island surrounded by perils such as pirates and dragons. Accompanying the message in a bottle is a little vial bearing a seed. They rush to Vice Mayor Twig with the letter but since he will become mayor in a week's time, he does not give any attention to them. Taking things into their own hands, they plant the seed in their home garden, following Mayor JB's instructions in the letter. As Sebastian goes through Mayor JB's letter, it suddenly rings a bell and he rushes to his great-grandfather's chest. As it happens, his great-grandfather actually found the mysterious island in the first few voyages of his life. Micho suggests they find the island so they can save Mayor JB. But Sebastian is reluctant since he cannot swim and they do not have a boat to set sail in the sea. Also, he had heard stories of his great-grandfather who set out to find the mysterious island but never returned. Micho accidentally drops his flashlight near the planted seed and wondering what it will grow up to be, he joins Sebastian and falls asleep. The following day, Sebastian and Micho wake up to their house being wrecked as a giant pear that has sprouted from their garden, almost the size of their bungalow. Sebastian calls Professor Glucose from the Atomic Institute to help with their destroyed house that could topple over any minute now. He arrives at the spot and using his atomic van, he transforms the giant pear into their new home, shifting all their belongings inside it. As the professor, Sebastian and Micho explore the new home, suddenly Vice Mayor Twig shows up with the police, as giant fruits are prohibited in his reign. The pair begins to move through the city drawing everyone's attention and with Twig and his forces chasing them, they are left with no option but to head toward the sea. As it turns out, the giant pair is now a sailing ship and they can finally venture out to find their friend and mayor, JB. Sebastian is hesitant initially since they are now fugitives, but seeing this as a chance to save JB, he joins hands with Professor Glucose and Micho, and they customize the giant pair with a makeshift sail, helm, and a special compass that works with batteries. The only batteries they have available are in the flashlight, and those are dead. Suddenly, they are attacked by some pirates, who introduce themselves as the cruelest pirates, but as it turns out, those are just empty words. While Professor Glucose and Sebastian surrender, Micho hides in the pair and launches an attack on the pirates with watermelons. The pirates are happy to find food after ages, so they get distracted, and meanwhile, Sebastian retrieves the batteries he notices on the pirate ship's deck. When the pirates learn that they are headed toward the mysterious island, they warn them that no one ever returns from it, and since they are afraid of it, they sail away. Professor Glucose and Sebastian return to their pair ship to a triumphant Micho and with the batteries, the professor is able to operate his beritic compass. In order for the compass to point in the direction of the mysterious island, they need a native rock from the island. As the professor has it tuned into Sunnytown, they learn that Twig will become mayor on the upcoming Saturday, so they need to fight against time to rescue JB. While they are figuring out what to do next, they get stuck in a sea storm. Suddenly, a huge metallic sea dragon emerges from within the massive waves and swallows the entire pair. Sebastian, Micho, and the professor are astonished to find themselves inside a ship, which is shaped to look like a dragon. The owner, Carlson, offers tea and food to the trio and as they get talking, 
he reveals he has a stone from the mysterious island that was given to him by an elephant like Sebastian a long time ago, only to be handed over to someone like him if somebody was to ever come looking for it. Distracting them with dragon-shaped food and tidbits, Carlson leaves to get rid of the pair as he intends to keep Sebastian, Micho, and the professor with him forever. When Sebastian notices his plans, he has the professor meddle with the electric panel to keep Carlson from disposing of their pair. To retrieve the rock, Sebastian stalls Carlson as he takes them to the kitchen to make his famous dragon dip. Once he has the rock, Sebastian signals the professor to head out from the dragon. They escape in their pair with Carlson chasing right behind them, but they manage to lose him. The professor is able to crack the location of the mysterious island and as they head in its direction, Professor, Sebastian, and Micho celebrate the entire night. The next morning, they wake up to a strange black cloud of darkness over the pitch black sea, ready to engulf them. Fearing they'll lose their way, the trio has no choice, but to enter the thick mist. Once in, they see ghosts and shipwrecks from the past, and as Sebastian is fumbling at the helm, the ghost of his great-grandfather helps them cross the dark sea. He appreciates Sebastian for his bravery and disappears once they reach the light, leaving with the message that if he keeps looking, Sebastian will always find a way. The next day, Sebastian wakes up to a distant shadow of land. He uses his binoculars to confirm that they had indeed been guided to the mysterious island. As they near the island, the strong winds force the pair to crash and they are washed away on the shores of the mysterious island. Sebastian finds a strange hole in the beautiful island and the trio set out to find JB. The island is covered with exotic plants and giant pears, along with giant pipes. They call out for JB and suddenly, he actually emerges from one of those pipes. After the happy reunion, JB informs them that when he was headed to the meeting with Twig, he accidentally hit his head and fell into a boat that sailed him away from Sunnytown. Being swallowed by a whale, he was finally spat out on this island and he had little hope that anyone would ever find his message in a bottle. Since the pear ship has been wrecked, they need to find a new way to get back to Sunnytown before Twig becomes the new mayor. Desperate to return to Sunnytown, Sebastian grows impatient when he learns that a new pair cannot be used as their ship. He stumbles through a hole and lands in a huge underground pipe network. Micho tries to rescue him, but his vine breaks and he falls down to join Sebastian. They accidentally activate a giant motor powering the underground pipe network which reveals a boat and they realize that the mysterious island can actually float like a ship. With his newly found courage, Sebastian comes at the wheel and they all set sail for Sunnytown. On their way back, they meet the ghosts of the pitch black sea again, and they are joined by Carlson who brings food, including his famous dip. The pirates from before are scared when they see the mysterious island floating toward them, but when they find familiar faces, they join them on the deck. When the professor tunes into Sunnytown with his beritic compass, it shows that Twig is rallying throughout the city and about to take the mayor's office after the ceremony is over. Suddenly the giant motor falters and the island stops moving. The only way to inform the people of Sunnytown about JB is through a message in a bottle. Remembering his great-grandfather's parting message, Sebastian descends to the base of the island ship with Micho so they can blast off the message to Sunnytown. The message reaches just in time before the final ceremonial cannon has to be fired and the general refuses to acknowledge Twig as the mayor. Enraged, Twig fires the cannon himself which hits the island, causing it to crash, hurling Sebastian and Micho into the water. As Mayor JB, Professor Glucose, the pirates, and Carlson are about to go down with the sinking island, Carlson signals his dragon boat, and they are saved. With little to no time left, they head to the shore of Sunnytown, where everyone is relieved to see that their beloved Mayor JB is well and alive. Due to the cannon explosion, a giant pear crashes through Twig's town hall, creating a giant pear-shaped hole that finally lets sunlight shine through the town. Meanwhile, as Sebastian falls deeper into the sea, he is saved by Micho even though he hates water but since his friend cannot swim, he puts aside his hatred of water and takes Sebastian up to an afloat drifting pair. Mayor JB and the professor are overjoyed to see that Sebastian and Micho are safe. In the end, the old ways of Sunnytown are reinstated. Despite Vice Mayor Twig's evil doings, Mayor JB lets him keep his office but he has to earn the trust again. Everyone goes on with their lives happily as once again the sun shines brightly over Sunnytown. Professor Glucose fashions a giant pear as the new town hall of Sunnytown, while Carlson becomes famous for his dragon-inspired food, especially his dip. The movie ends when Sebastian and Micho are fishing by the lighthouse on their town's shore, and Sebastian finds himself ready for any new adventure that might come their way in the form of another message in a bottle.